Hello, welcome back to our series on human resource management. Today we're talking about employee training. Once we bring employees on board, we got to train them for the job. So how do we do that? Let's jump right into the PowerPoint. Okay, so employee training. Now, one thing I want to do before we jump into this is make sure that we understand the difference between training and development. Training is very now oriented, meaning it's designed to achieve a relatively permanent change in an individual that will improve his or her performance in the current job, right? So training is all about making the person successful for the role they currently inhabit. Training goals should be tangible, verifiable, timely, and measurable. We're going to talk about that today. And training is either on the job or off the job. Once again, we'll talk about that today. Now, this is all different from development. And development is much more future-oriented and really kind of positions the employee for future success. We're not going to go into development today. That's in our next video. So I'm just going to kind of leave that alone right there and jump into employee training. But before we get into the actual nuts and bolts, let's look at some training theory. Now, to be honest, there's all kinds of employee training theory out there, and there's no way in the world we're going to go over all of it. I do, though, want to highlight one particular theory that is particularly popular in the environment, and that's called the ADDI model. Now, ADDI is an acronym for Assessment, Design, Development, Implementation, and Evaluation. Let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these pieces. So first, assessment. And by assessment, we mean let's see if training is even needed in the first place. Now, I'll give you an example. One time my business partner was called in and she was told, hey, our crew needs some training. They need training on this, that, and the other. We want you to put together a training module for us to make sure that everybody knows how to work and interact in these departments. And she said, well, first I'm gonna do an assessment. Her assessment showed that actually everybody knows exactly what needs to be done and how to do it and how all the systems and departments should communicate. The problem wasn't they didn't understand. The problem was they did not agree with how it was being done. And so had she not done an assessment, she would have just given them training on the very same thing that they had already been trained on and already understood and their arms would have just been folded there and they would have been staring at her with resentment. But because she did an assessment, she understood what the real problem was and was able to adjust the expectations of our client. So how do we do this? We observe the job incumbents and see what they're doing and how they do their work. We perform job interviews with the people doing the jobs, the supervisors, internal and external customers. This is exactly what she did in her case. We do questionnaires, talking to folks, saying, hey, how do you do this, that, and the other to see if there are any gaps. We might put together some focus groups, and then we'll look at documentation to see if performance standards are set and being met. All of this helps us assess the actual need. Now, the next two steps are design and development. These are the two Ds in ADDI. In this stage, we first take all the information that we got from the assessment and translate it into a blueprint for a training program. This is the design phase. It's one thing to have all this data. It's another thing to actually construct a curriculum that will help us meet our organizational objectives in the training. Now, this design should clearly state what change should exist at the end of training that doesn't exist at the beginning. In other words, what's the gap? What are they doing now? What do we want them to do after the training? And how are we going to get there? And then developing the training is really working with employees and with others and maybe some pilot groups to figure out, okay, how are we going to develop people and get them to this final optimal state, the end of the training state? This is going to take some experimentation and some failures and some reworking and tweaking, 
but that is what is necessary to get an optimal program up and running. And that takes us to implementation, where we actually pull the trigger and implement this program that we have designed and developed. Now, I mentioned before a pilot program. Sometimes implementation is done in a pilot program state as well. Pilot meaning instead of rolling it out to the entire company, you do it with some small groups just to make sure that you've designed and developed something that's effective. These pilot programs will also help you really kind of dial in the logistics of scaling this program out to larger organizations. So you'll want to look at the size of the group, organizational seating, materials, accessibility of information, comfort of the room, all that sort of stuff. Now, you already ran some focus groups and so forth, and you've done some tiny pilots, but as you scale this to larger groups, you're going to have to think about these logistical issues during implementation. Now, the final step in the ADDI model is E, evaluation. This involves the systematic collection of data and information necessary to make effective decisions related to the selection, adoption, value, and modification of training activities. So you can't just assume that this program that you've designed and developed and implemented is perfect. You're going to always tweak it. You're going to always modify it. You're always going to adapt it to new environments. So you have to constantly evaluate its effectiveness. Now, evaluating the effectiveness of a training program is so important, we're actually going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into this particular aspect. One thing to remember is that opinions are not measures. You can't just simply ask employees and managers, hey, did you like the training? Employee and management opinions aren't necessarily valid measures of evaluating effective training. They can be influenced by whether or not the training was difficult or if it was entertaining or the personality of the instructor, things like that. Performance-based measures, which actually measure the benefits gained, are better indicators of training's effectiveness and cost effectiveness. So let's look at some of these. One way to evaluate training effectiveness is by using the Kirkpatrick model. The Kirkpatrick model really looks at the effectiveness of training across four levels. The first level is, all right, what was the reaction to the training? This is, hey, did you like it? Now, You've all done these post-training surveys. Did you enjoy it? Did you feel it was effective? Did you think it was valuable? That's level one. Not too terribly helpful, to be honest. So then we go on to level two. What was learned? This is when a good evaluation model measures what was learned during the training. But we can go even deeper. Level three measures, did the training change behavior? So obviously, if we're providing training, that's because we want to change the behavior of the employee, make them more productive, more fulfilled in their role, more effective, so on and so forth. So did the training actually change the behavior? But then the holy grail is level four. Did the training benefit the employer? Training costs money. This is not something employers do just because they feel like it. They want a real return on this investment. So the final level measures to what degree did the training benefit the employer. Now, there are many ways that we can measure effectiveness and, and help feed data into that Kirkpatrick model that we just went over. We could go ahead and do post-training evaluations, right? Employees on the job performance is assessed after training. We can do pre-post-training. So this is when we evaluate employee performance before the training and after the training to see if a difference took place. We can also do pre-post-training evaluation with a control group. So we set up two groups. One goes through the training, one does not go through the training. Both are given a pre-evaluation and a post-evaluation 
to see if any difference took place. Well, now, why do the control group? Because they didn't go through the training. Well, we want to see if there are perhaps other factors that could influence employee behavior. So, for example, if we are doing training on increased productivity, was it the training that increased the productivity? Or was it some other factor that even the control group was, was exposed to? And therefore, the training really had nothing to do with it. Then the final one is evaluating at regular intervals post-training. This is to see how well did the training stick? What is the long-term retention and behavioral outcome of the training? Sure, maybe their behavior changed one week after, but did it continue to hold true a month, three months, six months, a year later? To what degree was the training and behavioral change sticky? Okay, so that's all the theory, and that's how we measure effectiveness. Now let's actually talk about how we do some employee training. And this is going to be just kind of a quick inventory, but you'll recognize most of them. First, we have on-the-job training methods. This is training provided by the employer to the employee on the job, right? Kind of makes sense. So first of all, we have actual on the job where one person is training another and helping them figure out how things are done. We have apprenticeships. Uh, not every industry uses an apprenticeship, uh, but a lot of the trades do. Uh, metalworking, welding, uh, construction, finished carpentry, things like that. They have apprenticeships. And then we have internships, which is basically an opportunity for an employer to test drive an employee and for an employee to test drive the employer to see if maybe after the internship there's a good match. Regardless though, during the internship, a lot of training takes place. And then we have off the job training methods. These are training methods that are still provided by the employer, but they're not done on the job, during the job, when you're actually engaged in the work. This is done off-site someplace else. So, for example, classroom lectures. And then we have multimedia learning. You're kind of doing multimedia learning right now if you're watching this in that you're going online and you're pulling up some lectures and so forth. Now, really good, well done multimedia learning in the corporate world includes little assessments, some live action, some role play, some, some engaging activities to help the employee stay you know, present in the training. And then you have simulations. This is where you go ahead and pretend to do something in a simulator. Uh, my father-in-law is a pilot, so he spent lots and lots of time in simulators. That's where pilots will learn. And then you have vestibule training. Vestibule training is similar to a simulation, except they actually set up an entire work environment that exactly matches the real world. So this picture here that I've, I've taped up, it might look like a store, right? The checkout aisle of a store. But in fact, it's not. It's a vestibule. All those products and everything against the shelves, that's just one shelf of product that they've put up there for effect. And a lot of them are just pictures and fake, right? But everything around the checkout stand, it's absolutely real. It is a real checkout stand. They have real UPC codes, if that's what they're called, on the products. And so checkers can be trained in this real world environment. That's vestibule training. And so what many employers will do is bring a variety of these training methods to bear to make sure that their employees are trained in the jobs that they've been hired to, to do, right? Now, that's different from development, which is our next video. So let's go back to the studio and then we'll go on to development. So there you go. Yeah, there's a lot involved in training and done properly, it can be pretty effective. And now you know a little bit more about what's involved in the process. So I hope you enjoyed. When we come back, we'll talk about employee development. So stick with me.